What's going on, everybody? So I tried to rewatch the Florida versus Vanderbilt game. I couldn't do it the entire game uh, for a second time. Couldn't put myself through that. So, um, you know, this is going to be more of a level-headed uh, video. Uh, if you watched my live reaction, I was not happy. I uh, watched some other people's live reactions. They were just like me. Um, you know, it, I was frustrated. I think a lot of Florida Gator fans were frustrated after their after the Vanderbilt game, and rightfully so. You know, um, I heard, you know, and I've said it that Billy Napier needs an uh, <laughs> needs an OC, needs an offensive coordinator. And one guy that I listened to made a great point. I think it was inside uh, Gators or Locked On Gators. You know, he said doesn't need an OC, but he do does need a passing game coordinator. And, you know, I agree with that, you know, and uh, will he do that? I, I don't know. Um, I don't know how, you know, stubborn or hard-headed Billy Napier is, but, um, you know, that makes sense. You know, I, I love hearing other people's opinions and, you know, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So, um, you know, I, I agree with that, but, you know, we'll see what happens in, in, in the off season, you know, if any changes are made to the coaching staff, but, you know, against Vanderbilt, you know, stats are going to look pretty good. Like Anthony Richardson, 25 of 42 for 400 yards, three touchdowns. The one fluke interception really wasn't on him. Uh, you know, who stood out in the game for Florida was Dejon Reynolds. Eight catches for a buck, 65, two touchdowns, that big 75-yard bomb. And, uh, you know, Vanderbilt was prone to giving up big plays. And Dejon Reynolds got behind the secondary and I thought he was going to be caught. <laughs> it looked like he was, but, you know, was able to get in. And he had two touchdowns, which was amazing. And, you know, he just bursted onto the scene against Vanderbilt. Now, the running game for the Florida Gators was pretty much non-existent. 21 carries for 45 yards. Um, you know, just not much there. The biggest thing that I saw, especially from the running backs, Trevor Etienne only getting five touches. You know, if the running game's not there, you can always get it, get him in the passing game. If you give him space, he can be electric. Five carries, it's kind of like what I'm seeing right now in the NFL. There's a former Florida Gator running back that was only getting single-digit touches a game. Now this dude's up for rookie of the year. And, um, you know, it just... It takes me back. I'm like, all right, now we got stud running backs and we're not going to utilize them. Um, you know, if, if the running game's not there, you can utilize them, get them in space. And, you know, really, the Florida Gators have not done that all year. They have not been able to find a way to get their running backs in space. Not sure why. You know, <laughs> they don't, they run a lot of wide receiver screens, but I, I feel like they run five to one uh, wide receiver to running back screens. And, uh, you know, uh, you see so many a game and it's just to the point where I'm like, teams don't even care they, they know they're going to, they're, they're going to stop the wide receiver screen. You know, the, there's not much blocking that it's just, I'm sick of the wide receiver screens. Uh, and I think a lot of other people are too, um, you know, defensively defense shot themselves in the foot on third down. Uh, a lot of times princely with a, uh, boneheaded play, you know, the really the, the four gear stopped them on third down. They were going to get off the field. Princely, really, I'm, I'm going to call the way it is. It's a selfish play. Guy hits him on the head or whatever it was, and Princely gets up, pushes the guy, and you're always, always, the refs are always going to see the second guy, and they got him. You know, a, a selfish play by Princely, and it cost the Florida Gators because, you know, Vanderbilt ended up scoring seven on that play or on that drive. So, uh, you know, uh a third and 12, Amari Bernie in coverage. We all know he's not the greatest cover linebacker. They were trying to get off the field, incomplete, on the other side of the field, and he's holding the guy, and they call a holding call, and it's an automatic first down. You know, the Florida Gators on defense had a hard time getting off on third down, and they've done that. They've That's been the problem all year. Florida Gators are one of the worst third down defenses in college football, and, you know, the Florida Gators defensively have looked great uh, or look good over the past couple of games, like eight straight quarters, they gave up zero points. You know, uh, you know, special teams did give Vanderbilt seven points at the end of the first half. Jason Marshall, you know, I get that's not the number three that we're used to seeing fielding punts. And Jason Marshall, I don't know what it was, but, you know, you're always taught, the punt returner is taught, keep your feet at the 10-yard line. If it goes over your head, let it go. And Jason Marshall was trying to make, 
like a, I mean, it was going to be a tough catch for even a receiver, but he's a corner. And he muffs it, goes into the end zone. Vanderbilt gets a free touchdown. And Florida loses by a touchdown. So, um, you know, uh, Florida just shot themselves numerous times. Credit to Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt pl- had a great game plan stopping the run. And they did a great job. Florida was incapable of getting the run game going or even figuring out a way to get it to the running backs. So the passing game looked great. A lot of the numbers are going to look great. You know, a lot of them were just throws at the end. Vanderbilt rushing, they rushed 46 uh, times, 175 yards, a 3.8 yard per carry average. But it seemed like whenever Vanderbilt needed those runs, they got them. Um, You know, if they needed eight, they got 10 and they were sustaining drives um, with the run game. Uh, Passing 108 yards, but three touchdowns for Mike Wright. You know, he didn't throw it a lot, but whenever he did, he was accurate. Now, whenever that interception he threw, Vanderbilt, man, they got, they were rolling the dice with him. But Jason Marshall did come up with a big play, had an interception. You know, um, not a lot of positives, I, th- I guess you could take away. You know, Florida losing to Vanderbilt. I mean, it just, it. I, I don't care if this is a first-year head coach or, or whatever. You don't, as a Florida Gator head coach, you don't lose to Vanderbilt. It just don't. Um, you know, I, I did hear Dan Mullen and one and one of the SEC networks kind of did a huh kind of you know smart a smart aleck remark um, you know about it. But you know, I mean, seeing your former team lose, of course they fired you. You know, I guess it kind of a little payback so you can save that on air. But I don't know if anybody caught that. But you know, altogether, it, uh, Vanderbilt deserved credit uh they played a heck of a game uh they had some things go their way like the interception the muff punt you know plays but you know one or two plays here and there man it it goes from a win to a loss and you know a couple plays here and there uh you you can look back and go man if florida you know just fielded the punt if they got off on third down you know you sit there and think about man those are just plays those are just killers it kills momentum and, uh, you know, Florida Gators really shot themselves in the foot. They did not deserve to win against Vanderbilt on Saturday. And uh, it looked like Vanderbilt was the better team. They were the better coach team. You know, um, you know the game the game plan was not the greatest. Uh, play calling was not the greatest. You know, third and eight, and we're running right at the teeth of, of the defense that we haven't even been running well. And, uh, you know, it's third quarter, and you're going to run a third and eight right up the middle and you go nowhere and so you're off the field it's like what are, what are we doing like you know why is Anthony Richardson not running the ball more you know there, there's a lot of questions that I'm like what what is going on um but I'm gonna I'm gonna end the video with this because if anybody can figure out what in the world that was at the end of the game though you know Florida needs a touchdown uh with eight seconds left first off that was Two were two bad throws. I mean, two of the worst throws. Okay, and the reason why I say it's two of the worst. Eight seconds left. You know, you need ten yards. Anthony Richardson does not even throw it ten yards. He throws it eight yards. Uh, the receiver has to dive for it, and you know, six seconds come off the clock, and they stop the clock. They literally stop the clock. He wasn't even too close to a first down, and they somehow gave Florida a shot at the end zone. And, uh, you know, miraculously, they got the play off. They had two seconds to get it off. They snapped it. And Anthony Richardson had all the time in the world. I've watched that play three or four times now. He had all the time in the world. No pressure, no nothing. And he throws it through the uprights. I mean, not even close. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar couldn't even get this ball. I mean, this ball sailed 20 to 25 yards out of bounds, not even close. I'm trying to figure out what in the world he was throwing to. You know, if he was looking for somebody open, maybe he saw a guy with a Florida Gator jersey in the stands. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, one of the worst throws that I've ever seen, um, you know, a Florida Gator quarterback make uh, because you didn't even give your guy a shot. You didn't even give him a chance. I mean, not even close. So, uh, you know, I haven't heard anything else about that. You know, like, what are you doing? Because I think it's something that you really can't defend or you can't like, what, (laughs) what do you, what can you say? You know, what can you say? Hey, it was just a bad throw. I mean, I don't know if he was trying to show off his arm talent for NFL scouts. Um, I'm not a hundred percent, but, 
Uh, one of the worst Hail Mary throws <laughs> to the end zone I've ever seen. But, um, you know, Florida, uh, they're 6-5, and 3-5 and five in conference, losing record in conference. And now they go on the road to Tallahassee to play Florida State. Um, I'm not liking our uh, Florida Gators' chances right now. I'm not liking it. And, you know, it's hate week. You know, it's, uh, you know, Florida, Florida State hate each other. So uh, it's rivalry week. And, you know, it's going to be fun. I got I got a lot of Florida State uh, people that I know, um, the friends that uh, I will probably tend to stay away from this week. I can't really talk trash, especially after uh, this performance that the Florida Gators put up. And FSU right now is rolling. So um, we'll see what happens on Friday. Maybe uh, a lot of Florida State players eat too much turkey on Thanksgiving. We'll see. But, hey, as always, I appreciate y'all watching this channel. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great one.